Hello everyone. Welcome to Control, a year later, the road to developing an award-winning supernatural trip. I'm Janina Gavankar. People know me, if they do, as an actor from television and movies um, or games like Star Wars Battlefront 2 or Far Cry 4. And um, I, if, you, if you follow my tweets at all, you know that I love this game. I loved Control. Like, whatever, we'll get into it later. Okay, I can't wait to introduce you to people. <laughs> First up, we have Mikhail Kasurinen, the game director of Control. He has been at Remedy since the mid 2000s. He went on to work on Mad Max and Battlefield. He came back to work on Quantum Break, which I also love. He is the head honcho of Control. Next, we have Sam Lake. He's the lead writer of Control and Remedy's, Remedy's creative director. He created the core concept of Control together with Mikhail. We have Matthew Peretta. He's the voice of Alan Wake and um, is also the actor behind Dr. Darling in Control. Sam is, Sam is uh, Sam's showing you, showing you other parts of, of Alan Wake. Um, and uh, we also have Courtney Hope, duh, of Who Was Beth um, in, wait, what is this? Here we go, okay. I'm doing great. I'm not a host, great. We have Courtney Hope, who is Beth in Quantum Break, and she's also Jesse Faden, AKA the director of Control. Welcome everyone to this Zoom panel. We're doing what we can and everything is graded on a curve, all right. <laughs> so let's get to some questions, shall we? Let's just get right into it. It's been a little over a year since Control launched to great reception. How has this year been for you? What have, what have we learned? Let's start with Mikhail. Yeah, I mean, during the creation of Control, we were doing a lot of new things, creating this strange, unfamiliar world. And there was a bit of, uh, let's say, anxiety, like how well people receive it. And, and it was so great to actually see this response that we ultimately got. And I think the thing that we wanted to do with Control was that we kind of keep releasing content, we keep it alive. And, and what's really been great is that the community has been there. Like everyone's been excited about the game. Every single time we do something, they are there to join the fun and constantly finding all kinds of cool things in the game and, and so on. And that honestly has been the best thing for me to see that community being so engaged by that game. Oh yeah, I mean, as a member of that community, I just, I don't want to leave. The world of control was in my dreams. I mean, I'm speaking for everybody who's played it. It just, it seeps into your consciousness and you don't want to leave. So please, yes, keep giving us more. Um, what do you think has resonated the most with the community um, about the game? Uh, from my end, I, I, it's what's so great is that we started off that we want to create this world that's kind of filled with stuff for people to find explore, as you said. and. And that's really the thing that landed so well, that, that people keep still thinking, rightly, uh, I'm not still sure if everybody's actually found everything yet, uh, that they keep coming back to it. And I'm kind of trying to crack some of the mysteries that are there. And, and that's exactly what we wanted. And, uh, and, and it's been great to see people uh, seeing that aspect of the game. Well, it worked and um, I can tell you because I was so obsessed with the all of the parts of it. I, I like could not get past Philip and the fridge. I looked at that <laughs> fridge tweak out so many times just with obsessively like, no, I will make this work. So uh, yeah, that, that makes sense. And, and I know that there's secrets and puzzles and, and other things that you know, released even later in AWE that people, I mean, I heard that you guys had like a pole going on the cat ear Easter egg. Yeah. How how long, first of all, explain that so people know what I'm talking about. And uh, how long did it really take the community? Uh, I don't actually know exactly how long it took. All I know really at the end of the day that we continuously think that people will never figure this out. Like it's gonna take ages for them to realize what is going on or, or even realize that there is even a mystery. And every single time what happens is that, yeah, it's like one or two days later, oh, they figured it out, what? 
And <laughs> it was actually funny in AWE, there was actually a secret and we also did a bet there. And our art director, Elmeri said like 18 days. And I learned something through this year, actually. I said one day, one day, and it's going to be figured out. And I was right. Okay, well, I missed it by like uh, maybe three to four hours until they found it. And I was like, yes, mm. I, I've learned something. <laughs> Next time, I, I, I don't even know what we can do to keep these secrets anymore. Honestly, it's <laughs> I'm oh getting a bit gosh. desperate. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's this is this is what you do so well. Um, but and now we all just know that that almost everything is going to lead to something else. So just keep digging. You know, I love that you didn't tell anybody what this was, but I gave like I gave a little bit of a hint. It mm -hmm. includes cat ears. So just uh, go go figure it out. Go find it. Um, Courtney, Matthew, have you played the game? Yes, I played. Well. I played all of it and my boyfriend played half of it because I learned very early on, I am not good at combat. I am not good at it. I die like this. <laughs> so <laughs> it was like it was like a joint effort. But yeah, I've played all of it. I've sat and watched all of it and I loved it. My kids play it and uh, I, you know, it's like I kind of just watch them play. I'm uh, not a gamer, but I, I uh, you know, they they fill me in on on everything. In fact, uh, I have some notes for you guys from uh, from my youngest of, of what he needs, uh, what you know, things that he needs for Jesse. So uh, I'll give that to you after this is done. All right. But, uh, awesome. Awesome. Oh, Thanks. Okay. Looking, looking really, forward. He did tell me before yeah. we started, he goes, listen, tell, you know, I, I won't say what he wanted, but he was like, she needs this, that. Then I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll let him know. <laughs> you, you know, Courtney, you said this, this cuddle up, right? Like the couple cuddle up of a game is I, it's my favorite thing. You know, people have different skills. So it's a yeah. great way to, to experience the best games. The, really the best ones are the ones that, that cause the cuddle up to happen. And they're great. Okay. Well, and I was gonna say quickly, I think it's interesting too, what I learned about it as well is playing something with somebody else. Like everybody explores something different in the game. Like what I want to go look at, what he wants to go look at. So it is kind of interesting to to have that collaboration of fans. I know they do that, you know, in their own world, but it's nice to do that because other people find things that you might not have even gone in that room to go look at. Yeah, especially in a new relationship. You're like, really? That's how your brain thinks? <laughs> oh, I just learned so much about you by interacting with a game together. Um, okay, so it's been a good year, guys, but can we, can we start from the beginning? I, Sam, can you tell us, how long ago did you start creating control? And I just need to know what that weird ass conversation was. Uh -huh. Well, uh, first of all, kind of this year, I have to say that I am still a bit nervous and worried that that kind of with, with control, we have caused the whole 2020. Uh, I mean, we, we have this otherworldly thing called the his leaking in and infecting everybody and and altered world event this has been an altered world event <clears throat> the whole year false so, yes. so, so so sorry everybody this is this is a, a fair point yeah it felt like a good idea at the time but yeah yeah we are sorry <laughs> uh, sorry not sorry i mean it it's it's strange how these things have kind of many beginnings and and it 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 kind of is is built from different uh pieces uh the, the first time at remedy when we were talking about an idea to have this kind of a bureau investigating strange otherworldly events goes back like you know pretty much to Alan Wake, so so ten years, uh, and and that kind of went away, and and we went with other ideas, but but then like when when Mixu came back uh, to Remedy to work on Quantum Break, and and like in the in the latter part of Quantum Break, we started workshopping and brainstorming kind of what the next project would be. Uh, all kinds of ideas flying around, but but then kind of slowly, piece by piece, uh, the, the 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 idea of federal bureau of control, and and this kind of a uh, weird, <laughs> strange, uh, nightmarish action uh, 
uh, adventure game kind of was built. So, so what would I say? Kind of, you know, four years, five years to start with the kind of small ideas, but then officially, like, like actually going with it, it was pretty much three years to, to figure it out and build it. I think the, the most meaningful moment was when we had a number of different sessions, Sam, in Kalastaja Torppa, the, mm -hmm. the hotel. I, I, it's, it's really, I kind of uh, reminisce those days fondly sometimes, how, how, how great it was to just Actually, sit down. Now, and we took days and just talked about it and, and so now, on. Now that, now, that you, now that you mention it, it's, it's, it's this kind of a pretty retro uh, hotel and and uh, mm. conference uh, center uh, in 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 Helsinki and and surprise surprise we we have this pretty retro <laughs> that's interesting uh, yeah uh, i've literally locked ourselves in and mm -hmm. didn't leave until we had something and then this happened <laughs> well you're locked in again uh, <laughs> um, this is so so what were some of your references? Like, take us to that conversation. What were some of the, the things that you, you, you pulled into the conversation that you, you wanted to really kind of borrow from spiritually? Yeah, I mean, like, like once again, many things, uh, you know, we, but, but, but very much at that point in time, we were kind of gravitating towards, um, you know, science fiction kind of grounded in reality in, and, and kind of a literary genre of, of new weird in a way that, that you know, and, and Jeff Wondermee's Annihilation being a great example uh, of that, you know, something, something where things are left for interpretation when, when, when it's uh, kind of a very strongly atmospheric uh, experience, but but you know the the actual information in 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 the narrative is not handed to you and and explained to you. It's it's rather there for you to discover and and piece together from these fragments to create your own interpretation of 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 what's going on with the, with the idea that if we were to deal with these kinds of, you know, otherworldly uh, alien uh, forces, then maybe human mind can't even understand them. And, and, mm. and from that came the idea that, well, we have this bureau that's very much looking into these and, and, and trying to use them and understand them, but, and, and they certainly have their own science and own theories, but, but is that, the correct interpretation, and that's left for the player to to figure out. Also, kind of you know another uh, long-standing source of inspiration on the on the kind of a, a literary side is is um, a book called The House of Leaves, which which is kind of a postmodern horror story, and and. And that also felt really fitting because there are multiple layers of narrative going on mm -hmm. and, and you are kind of, you know, uh, trying to form your own idea of what's really happening uh, in it. It's, it's kind of a, you know, postmodern writing all in all, I've always felt is kind of a game for the reader uh, to, to, you know, you, you are almost playing game, figuring it out and, and obviously we make games. So, so that felt like a great reference point as well. Wow, this is a new concept. I've never heard anybody say this, that postmodern literature is a great starting point or a great reference to games. Wow, cool. Okay, I'm just gonna we'll talk about that another time. I'll go down a rabbit hole. Um, but the thing is that that's an esoteric reference. You know, you didn't say, the X-Files, Mr. Robot, you didn't choose sort of like lower hanging fruit. And I love those shows, but uh, so I'm not saying it disparagingly at all, but you're choosing pretty, pretty esoteric ideas. How do you, how do you 
how do you, I mean, that I guess is the way to stay true to what a remedy game is. It's a specific kind of weird, but how do you take that and then make a palatable game that works for a wider audience? It's a good question. <laughs> and, and we wrestle with <laughs> it. <laughs> I mean, but, but of course there are these, you know, of course there is an echo of X-Files uh, in it. You know, sure. just, just having a bureau and, and weird phenomena. Uh, and and th there are other kind of maybe more, you know, explosion-like references, like say Christopher Nolan's Inception was a big thing for us as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and and you can you can see that in there as well, um, but but you know to really go into the heart of it and 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 you know draw things out of it that the the new weird felt inspirational and exciting and new for for myself and 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 Mixu as well I think um, yeah but but at the same time it is. Uh, big spectacle, action, story, and, and, you know, kind of a superhero thing as well with, with, with Jesse's powers and, and, and all of that. So it's, it's once again, like many things coming together and, 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 and forming hopefully something unique uh, mm -hmm. in the process. Uh, that makes a lot of sense and, it, and it's probably, um keeps it in more of the art world, right? I mean, we see games that are clearly referencing other games and then it becomes self-referential and really derivative instead of going, sort of zooming out and looking at other pieces of culture like movies and books. And that is like, uh, I mean, the movies are referencing literature anyway, so why not go back to the source? Uh, it's, it, it's a safer bet. Also, I have a question. If you're going to say new weird, but like make it like a term, like nouveau weird, what is the Finnish way of saying new weird? Uuskumma. Uuskumma. Better. Better. I should go on with that, actually, now that I think about it. Mm -hmm. Good. You yeah. should go, well, go trademark that. Go like, trademark that real fast. If you go and ask Ahti, he would, he would tell you. Okay. <laughs> I'm into it. I think I think this is an, this is a an industry wide new term. <laughs> I like it. I, I say we push it. Um, okay, so my next thing that I just kind of want to bring up is that you know it's it's rare for anyone to build a troop of actors, even as a filmmaker, and and those who who do are often auteurs like a Wes Anderson or a Taika Waititi or a Bong Joon Ho. These people have their trusted artists and performers that become like a theater troupe for them. And that gives a certain kind of, of yumminess to a project. Like you get to play friends that you know and love. And Control is very much a Remedy All-Stars project. I would love to know from the actors, how did you, what does that call like? What, what, how did you get involved with Control specifically? Let's start with you, Matthew. Um. Well, I, you know, I started with Alan Wake and, and that was just by chance, just showing up to an audition and getting the job. And, uh, you know, sometimes in your career, things work out, you know what I mean? And this worked out and, uh, you know, you, you meet people that are like-minded and are creative and you just click. And uh, everybody over at Remedy is, is, is just like that. They're very, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're looking to create something different and new and, you know, it's what, you know, being an actor, that's what we want, right? So it is, it's kind of, um, it is, it's like a safe place where, I mean, you know, you guys are, the Remedy is so brave to do that. There's so much on the line making a game, do you know what I mean? And a lot of times people will be safe, but it's like, I mean, you guys go for it and I'm down. It's like, I'm ready to, I'm ready to go for it too. It's like, you know, put me in my underwear and like have me have a nervous breakdown or sing. I'm like, I'm your guy. So uh, yeah, it's been, it's, it's been great. Really. It's, it's just a, a gift really. Courtney. Yeah. Um, I mean, 
all of what Matthew just said is a hundred percent on the nose. I mean, I, I, it was the same thing with me. I, um, for quantum break showed up just for an audition. And, um, like he said, it all worked out and it was fantastic working with everybody for remedy and, um, yeah. And, and really creating, um, like Matt said, something new and something of depth. I know that for me, that was something that was really important. And I felt like the layers just kept coming. And that was something that like, I personally was craving and I love collaborating with everybody at Remedy. So when Sam had called me about, um, control, I was, I mean, it was like, Hey, it's Sam. And I have, I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> say what it was I was like I'm in but then when he told me what it was I was like oh now I'm 100% in hell yeah so I mean I'm definitely honored and I've I've grown so much as a human being too and I've made lifelong friends and family from working with Remedy so I'm, hmm. I'm beyond happy yeah. so I, I'd love to talk about Jesse for a second um Mikhail and Sam you can you can tell me what were the core tenets um that you wanted to make sure she was built on um, to make sure she was a fresh new character. Sam, do you want to start? Yeah, like, uh, you know, just briefly going going to All Stars uh, idea. I, yeah. I, 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 I mean, when you, when you work with somebody and, and you find a very talented, you know, person you can trust uh it's it, it, it is a kind of a big deal and and what kind of when 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 creating new characters and writing uh it it i find it great to be able to think it through somebody i already know and i have an idea that they could do a really good job with this character so so you know in in the case of jesse from from pretty much from the beginning, I I had Courtney in mind, and 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 it did go back to Beth Wilder in Quantum Break. Also from the perspective that it felt always uh, in in during Quantum Break that we could have done more, and 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 then there are all kinds of product you know production realities and and scoping and all of these things. So it just felt like now we can do more. <laughs> we, with Jesse, and 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 so that, in some ways, was a starting point, and 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 then you know just wanted also, you know this this young woman, uh, who is very much like, in a, a big contrast, to the world that she she steps into, uh, and and that 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 was also important to have this point of view. Uh, we are following into this crazy, weird experience and, and, and kind of we wanted to flip it so that it wouldn't be somebody uh, who would be horrified like and, and shocked as the first reaction, but somebody who actually feels at home <laughs> because that's a very kind of a surprising way into it that that instead of you know oh no this is a house of horrors and i need to get out rather have this really strong reaction of i want to find out what this is because it feels like i've been looking for this all my life mm. and 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 that was a kind of a very much a starting point uh somebody who is excited about it because in a game it's also very important because we know that the players playing this game, they will be excited and they want to learn more. And, and, and then creating a character who, who is all about that, uh, you know, as a starting point. So, so that's how Jesse was born. Yeah, I, I have exactly pretty much the same thing. What, what makes me kind of really like Jesse is that I remember Sam when we talked about the kind of opening sequence and, and she comes in and finds the old director and so on. And, and we talked about the line where she literally says, I am happy. Like that that she has this first inkling that she starts to be in a place where she feels almost like at home. That she's what she's been looking for in a in a strange, weird way. Mm. And and that to me belongs to when we talk about new weird as a as a genre, that there's this overall feeling 
that there is this holistic take of the world. Yes, the world is weird, but the character is kind of a bit weird as well. And and, and that was a huge part of Jesse. And and she was ready and, and she she felt like she belonged. She's ready to kind of dive deeper. And and that's what makes her a fantastic character. And mm. um, Courtney, you, you know, the flow for an actor working on a game can be really disjointed as you fly back and forth. And um, how over how much time did you shoot your work or work just work on control? I think it spanned over like a year and a half from flying back and forth. I remember he called me in September of 2017, I believe. And I didn't start filming until um, like March or something of 2018. My brain's like a calendar. So it just like zooms in. It's like, oh, there's the date, sorry. Um, and then we had just finished it. So I guess in total, I guess actually two years because we just filmed the last stuff for the deal. But the actual main game, I think was like a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And so, so that means you're sort of clicking in and out of this character while you're also working on other projects. What are some things that you use to have you quickly drop into her to sort of put her back on? Well, I think for me, and I, I say this a lot, but when I work on something, I create the memories of that human being. Um, not just necessarily looking at like the lines or what they're going through circumstantially. It's like the memories of, I mean, the memories of um, my childhood and, and, you know, the slide projector. And I mean, that stuff was so vivid to me from the beginning that every time I came back, it was like easy to just jump right back in because I just immediately mustered up those memories and was like, oh, okay, here I am. And, and what the oldest house was like and what it was like with Dylan and not being around him and being on the streets. I mean, stuff that was even like not written, you know, was mm -hmm. so vivid in my mind. So it became easier for me to switch back and forth. Um, it was kind of something I, you know, cultivated over the years because of switching back and forth. I was like, okay, what's the most efficient way? Well, create memories, you know, memories in our own mind in the human psyche. If it's something profound to you, you're not going to forget it. And so that was something um, that also kind of, uh, brought up a lot of feelings um all the emotions were there too so that was my that was my way through um at the blink of an eye mm. and is there one specific memory of jesse's that takes you right in yeah it's dylan i think dylan for me like even now it makes me emotional like dylan yeah. for me is so real and it's so um that's my fight that's my livelihood for um, continuing to stay alive and continuing to, to accept and embrace and, and eventually learn, you know, um, to celebrate challenge because it's like, I, I know at the other end of it, I just knew, you know, that, that he's still somewhere. And that was, that became every fight I was ever in, whether it was, um, you know, metaphysical or physical or emotional, um, as Jesse, that was the one thing that was always like that dangling carrot in front of me. Like, okay, as long as I have my eye on him and the potential of him being somewhere out there, then I can get through anything. And so that mm -hmm. Dylan, him being taken, it was like, that's really real for me. That's really powerful because, um, you know, obviously that's like backstory. So it grounds you, but it's also a super objective, which is a very theater term for everybody who's watching who's not like a nerdy actor um <laughs> it just means that like yeah you you have a scene and you want you have an objective in a scene but but for everything to work together you have to have a super objective that's like it's almost like a biodome that goes over the entire thing to keep yeah. you intact and it's really powerful that one person can be both things for you that's pretty special yeah um, okay, so, so one of my, my favorite things about Remedy Games is the live action elements. <laughs> I really think that your studio sews together these mediums really, really well in a really special way. Um, just the Easter eggs in general. I don't know if, if anybody out there knows this, but when Quantum Break came out, I, um, I did a live reading of Time Knife, the screenplay in my home and it was just one of the most fun things I've ever, ever done. You guys are a bunch of weirdos, I love it. Um, 
so I would love to know Probably how the idea that. of of Darling's videos came about. Yeah, it, it, it is a good question, and and because in 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 that way, Matt's experience with this game is is very different from Courtney's experience. Obviously. Yeah, it must be. Be, be, be. Because Darling essentially exists only in these videos. And 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 that was, you know, for for and there, there are multiple reasons. Like like I just felt that that uh, I mean, you know, as said, live action. We've done that, and it's been a journey going back all the way to Max Payne, where we started doing these uh, in-world TV shows in in small televisions inside the, the the game world. And back then, it was that just you know still frames with kind of a radio play, because technology wouldn't allow us anything else. Then in Alan Wake, we we got to the point where we could actually have live action footage in them. And, and you know, going forward to Alan Wake's kind of a spin-off small game, we ended up doing the cutscenes as live action. Uh, and, and it was a smaller project, so that, that make, made sense there. Then in Quantum Break, we just went crazy. It's a full TV show inside the game. Uh, and, and, and now in, in, in Control, we, we kind of scaled back from that, but, but we wanted to find new ways to use live action. And, and obviously we, we, we have all kinds of kind of experimental live action use, use going on. As an example, you know, when, when the old director Trench appears to you, that is all live action footage, but it's, it's, it's in layers as a blended video on top of uh, the, the game footage while you are playing, and and when when and you know maybe these are some spoilers, but I guess it's one year, so no. Come matter. on, guys. When, when you are point... on, when you are on the trail of Ahti, uh, you know, and and he has left for his summer vacation somewhere. Um, you you have this journey and and kind of this, uh, you know. Uh, Italy landscape uh, starts to come in as live action footage as you walk towards him. So, so we have these experiments going on, but at the same time, it felt like we can do and be much more ambitious with this idea of in-game TVs or in-game screens. And, and, and let's come up with really, really uh, fun and good content for those. And, 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 and that felt like, well, it would be great for Darling that, that we have this character who is a very integral, central part of the Bureau, that the main mm -hmm. researcher, all of this crazy science is based on his work. But, but when we set out in the game, he's already gone. He has disappeared because of this crisis and we don't know where he is. And all we have are these breadcrumbs of his, you know, internal educational videos <laughs> and then his more private uh, video diaries and, and kind of interleaving these showing the public face of this guy but then showing the private uh, uh, version and, and, and building a proper arc to, to kind of actually have a layered interesting character who maybe first appears almost a bit of a joke and, and, and you know bit of a showman doing his presentation, but then we start to see some cracks appear and, and get a, this, this deeper uh, view into him. And, and that was the idea. And, and, you know, Darling, once again, going back to Remedy All-Stars, Darling was, was custom made for Matt. Like, like <laughs> you know, work, working with Matt on Alan Way and, and getting to know Matt, uh, and Alan Wake is a certain kind of a kind of a hero character as as you have, but but you know knowing Matt and and knowing that, that he can do comedy as well really really well, uh, it 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 just I wanted to find these kind of both sides and 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 put them into Darling 
that that there is this showman and there there is this kind of a comic side to him, but then a very serious side as well. And 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 that's that's darling. Uh, it, it worked. I, I'm still kind of like you know excited when I when I think about it. That that and and, and you know just to be honest, Matt visited us one once for a week, and and we, we you did that all had, in a week. We we yes. had the sets built, and and obviously he had the screenplays beforehand, and and then we did a very basic traditional live action shoot for a week with just him on the set of, you know, his private room and then the, the kind of a presentation lab room. And, mm -hmm. and we did all the materials, including the music video. And, and it was fantastic. God and bless you guys. That's, that's fun. Yeah. But how, fun. And how much content is that? How much did you guys create? Pretty much, I, I think it's, 40 minutes uh, or, or so of, of content in, in game. Steph, just so you know, you don't know this, but when I had a layover from, I think it was, uh, I had a layover in Oslo, I, I left the script on the plane. <laughs> I literally- I can't, I can't, as I, I can't. Got, as I got on, as I got on, the, as I got on the, the flight to Helsinki, I had like, you know, I, I got it probably like two days before I, I jumped on the plane. So I had notes and everything like that and everything gone. Oh. So, and so I, I just casually just, hey, so do you guys um, you have another script? You know, and it was like, oh, sure, sure. It's like, so yeah, the, uh, it's somewhere, it's floating around out there somewhere. Oh, viral marketing, viral marketing. Yeah, yeah right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> so yeah, it was four days and it was like being shot out of a cannon. Um, I think, uh, you know, you want to talk about like building a character it really was, you know, you go with what was on the page, right? And there was a lot mm -hmm. on the page. Um, but everything came together uh, through, you know, through everybody, my costumes, the sets, everything. As soon as I like, you know, I got those round glasses, I got my lab coat, I, you know, it's like, you know, my, my sweater vest and my bow ties and, um, you know, it just started started to happen. This kind of like uh, curious optimism of this guy, even if he was like, you know, you know, things were kind of falling apart. He was still curious. So I, I I think as I was going, there was really just one line that summed Darling up for me. Was that I think it's like one of his last lines is he's kind of like cracking up in his underwear and he says. Um, there's one more thing that's happening. Uh, and, I, you know, I've been talking about like all this horrible stuff that's been happening. And the last line is something wonderful, I think. And so I was like, oh, mm. that's who Darling is. No matter what, it's like that. It, there's like this optimism and there's this beauty that he sees in the hiss. There's, there's like, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a great character. I mean, it's just, it's so much fun to do. And uh, I, uh, as soon as I saw that, I was like, I got this guy. I see it. I see what, I see who he is. And, uh, and again, it's on the page. So thank you. Yeah, that's so interesting. Yeah, I mean, there's sort of two kinds of, of scientists that we, well, we, we mo normally see the other mad scientists, which is like, I don't care how I get the discovery, but I'm gonna make a discovery and make history. And this guy is like, all of this is history none of all of this is new right. curiosity and, it's like he's like the lotus in the mud puddle right so that it's mm. like it kind of stays like darling you know what i mean and there's just chaos and like you know it's like you know he's talking about you know we, we lost some some valuable members in our team i think he uh, he says and it's like you know there there are going to be there's going to be collateral, collateral damage you know yeah and uh it's all <laughs> you know it's just it's, it's a it is a great character i mean it's uh it's um and again, in a weird way, when you are doing stuff at that speed, four days, it's like you're cranking out, you stop looking at yourself. It totally takes you out of, you know, that uh, where you're really just in the moment. You know, you're like doing stuff and you can do some really good work because you're not, you're not focused. It's like, there's, you don't have time. Yeah. You know? So you're just like, 
you're just you're out there doing it and stuff happens. It was yeah, just just to give people a perspective on on how much material forty minutes really is. Um, your standard network television show that you're watching is is around forty to to forty four minutes, and will take about ten days to shoot that. And uh, the requirement of the actor, the load on the actor is so much less than what they did because you're working with other people and you have time off when they move the cameras around. None of that happened when they were shooting this. This was a, these are locked off shots, which means they put one camera right here and he's just gotta go. So this is like a doing a one man show and, and workshopping it and capturing it at the same time in four days. This is a feat for everybody involved. It's a, it's a the, giant the darling show. The darling show. Yeah, it's a giant amount of work, and I think you should probably go to Broadway with it. I'm just saying, like throwing it out there. Just like think about it. Just just try it out. Go, um, go the darling, the musical. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm into it. Um, what are? Can you give me Matthew? Can you give me the difference between the voices, darling, and and Alan? Well, well, darling is more. Uh, there's an optimism, a, a youthful quality. Uh, mm -hmm. in Don, there is just a, he is, yeah, there's a youthful quality. Whereas Alan Wake is an old soul. And um, it's funny, you know, Alan Wake was a character that was created over 10 years. Do you know what I mean? And Darling yeah. was created in four days. You know what I mean? I mean, just from, you know, in my perspective, we, we did it in four days. But I, I think, um, yeah, Alan Wake, I, I didn't know anything about video games when this started, like nothing, I didn't know. And so it just kind of, it evolved, it evolved. Um, you know, I mean, Alan Wake is more down here where oh. Dark speaks like I speak. <laughs> because he was written for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it was wonderful now, like, you know, for, for the second DLC, uh, AWE DLC to, to come back to, to Alan Wake's character with, with Matt. I mean, because of the COVID, COVID situation, it, it was really interesting. Like Matt was in, in, in New York, uh, myself and, and, and other many people in Finland, our, our uh, performance director, uh, 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 Hannah Price was, was in the UK and, and the audio technician uh, from, uh, was from uh, site LA in Los Angeles and, and <laughs> <laughs> then a couple of days of shooting uh, all the Alan Wake uh, voice materials uh, for for uh, AWE. So <laughs> so you know strange times, but but we got everything that we needed. And and these days, you know, even even after a long break, going back to Alan Wake with Matt, it's like, and it's on. It's funny. It's like a like a long weekend, right? You just kind of like we we had just like a weekend off. Then back, we're like, oh yeah, right, okay, I remember this guy. Let's do this. Yeah, yeah it's kind of what what Courtney was saying. It's like you have something that you can grab onto, and it just it drops you right back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you did just mention, you know, there's a connection in this remedy connected universe. Can you what can you can you tell us more about that? Look for our, for us remedy heads, <laughs> who'd you said no? <laughs> no. No. I mean, yeah, like like it's it's been our dream uh, for for a long time, and and this idea has been bouncing around, and we we've been biting our tongues not to say anything you know, beforehand, going into control, we didn't want to say anything, although it was, of course, clear to us that, that it is in the same world. We wanted to hide this fact. And, and <laughs> obviously, in, in, in control, going around, you can find the bureau documents that, that kind of is the, the bureau's investigation into Pride Falls uh, events in 2010. And, and even at that point, we really didn't want to say anything I, I, other than then we started talking about uh, the second DLC, AWE, and even in that uh, kind of the image for that, we have 
the silhouette of a, of a man in a forest with a flashlight, which is pretty clear then. <laughs> um, and, and, and this now for us was kind of the first baby step, I would say, into uh, mm -hmm. Remedy Connected Universe, kind of a first crossover event. And, and, you know, obviously it's a DLC, so it's not a huge game or anything, but you, you have to start from somewhere. And, 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 and now kind of we, we brought in Alan Wake and Alan Wake elements, uh, you know, to, to visit. Uh, and, <laughs> to and visit, <laughs> I like that. For, for a visit uh, in, 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 in the bureau and in, in control. And, and well, this is the first step. And, and we, we are not uh, ready to kind of uh, really talk about anything specific that we are working on. Obviously we are working- oh, But you are working on something. It sounds as though you well, might be working on some kind okay. of connection yeah. between the two. Well, well like, like the, the, the game that we are working on is set in this same universe. That, okay. that much we can say. And, and okay. we, we have big plans and we are very excited and you need oh, yeah. to stop us now before we say anything more. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to stop you there. I'm going to stop you there, but I'm I, it's just very exciting to hear that they're that you're thinking about it. And it makes sense because you know, you were talking about a bureau 10 years ago. So, what that what's exciting to me as like a, a snob is that you're not just retconning things to make it make sense. You're not just trying to find these little weird pockets to shove connection into. This has really been a part of the remedy consciousness for a decade already, connecting all of these things. So it that's probably why it feels so seamless and why it will continue to. Having said that, what I think is really important to us is that there is this sense of um, stylistic and tonal clarity between the different games that we create. When, when you look at Control and when you look at Alan Wake and so on, you can kind of see and sense that there's a different kind of approach to how the experience comes across to the player. Like there's a certain kind mm -hmm. of lens that we use as we look through the kind of content of the world. And, and that was the kind of angle that we took with the uh, AWE as well, that we wanted to kind of peek into the world of Alan Wake through the controls lens, basically. And, and that's how we set up a lot of things up. Uh, so it's important to us that there's this like sense of a clear distinction between the different uh, kind of uh, games that we create, but still there's this connecting tissue that makes them bigger than the sum of their parts. So uh, that's that's really exciting. And that's something that I think, uh, well, as Sam said, we can talk more at this point. Uh, well, well, like as a tiny thing, like like to echo uh, uh, Mixu, uh, yeah, the kind of how we see it is that every game we create we, we want it to be first and foremost a great experience on its own. Mm -hmm. but, but, but then the idea of Remedy Connected Universe uh, is, is there to give it depth and, and, and kind of create this ongoing narrative while, while you can experience this one thing on its own, there are still interesting links and connections and, and, mm -hmm. and kind of a deeper layer in this uh, that that for for our fans uh, you know who, who want to experience the universe will get all of that uh, while you know everybody who who comes for just one game will still get a, a great experience on its own yeah well I mean oh God whatever I could yes great we like it. <laughs> um, we're running out of time, so I don't want to talk too much about my own opinions, um, but they're all just positive. Okay, so I do have to kind of ask, this is a silly question, but uh, if you could have one ability from control, which one would it be and why? Courtney, go. I say this all the time, but I say levitate, and it's only because I have always wanted to fly. I always thought it was something cool. I used to be really afraid of heights and then I learned it was really I was afraid of the fall not the not being up high yeah. so I figured there's this I don't know something really cool about um I don't know I just that 
We're running out of time. That's what I would do. I would <laughs> love to. Yes. Okay. Matthew? Telekinesis, I guess, or maybe pick up a car and throw it. I think that's kind of fun. You can pick stuff up and, yeah. Right. Other, yeah. Well, you know, in a, in, a, in a traffic jam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. LA yeah. traffic. Gently, gently, around. gently. Yeah, gently. <laughs> Sam, how about you? I would choose uh, coffee. No, no, wait, that wasn't the power. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I will go with Levitate as well. I, I, I think it would be wonderful. Gosh, and Mikael? Yeah, I, I think there's, uh, there's an ability that people don't even realize and say it's an ability, but there's this thing called the hotline that allows Jesse to commune with things in the beyond. That would be uh -huh. kind of cool to be able to do that. Have a chat with Trench, maybe. Oh, man. <laughs> Of course you chose hotline. Oh my God. Of course. Um, yeah, it's definitely now. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Okay. So a year later, guys, what is the most surprising thing from all of this? Mikhail? The most surprising thing. I hate to be boring, but it's, I, I, I just read, like read it. I think a couple of weeks ago, and there was this one guy, a, you know, woman uh, who basically was playing the game and was trying to get like 20 million, these kind of uh, source items in the game. And those are those like little kind of blue things that drop from the enemies as you deal damage to them and mm -hmm. so on. So you kind of collect this currency and 20 million, that's like crazy. That, that amount, that's just insane. Yeah. And, and he was having fun. And to me, that was in a strange way, uh, a kind of thing that I never expected that I would ever have been part of creating a game that made people play like that, experience something like that, mm -hmm. be so engaged, invested in the world. And, and, and it made me uh, really happy in, in a weird way when I saw yeah. that. And, and a bit sad maybe for that person, but like he was happy, so I should be happy as well. So yeah, yeah there, there I mean, was you're, a, there was a you're causing there. massive engagement. Yes. Um, okay, I have to wrap it up now. I, I would just love to ask you guys so many more questions. First, I just, I wanna thank you for making this game and continuing to make the new weird. Um, and what's the, what's the finish word? Uskumma. I still can't. Okay, we'll we'll get it. We'll get it. We'll have to write it down so people can, so Pax can put it under on uh, under a Chiron. Um, speaking of, thank you, Pax, for having us, and and thanks, Remedy, for calling me to come play. Seriously, you guys make some of the most exciting exciting games. You're one of the most exciting studios in the entire games industry, and I know I speak for everyone uh, when I say, please give us more. <laughs> And that's it. That's the end of the panel. Thank you everyone for tuning in. And um, let's do this again next year. Okay. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.